Welcome to Nightly News. And what's what's different about the setup? We can be anywhere. We could literally be anywhere now. Where should we be? I don't know, Mordor or No, let's be at the <clears throat> sacking of Rome. That's a bit a bit rough. Okay. Let's be in Transylvania. Why? No, not Portland, Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you were going to say, let's be in hell. No, 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 not LA. <laughs> Welcome to Nightly News, where we react to the news so you can hear our thoughts on it. But it's not. I'm not going to give it. No, what no. We, this is a news we folks. We don't give you the news. We uh, we talk about what's in the news yeah. and discuss. The people up there, they give us the news. In fact, we might be slipping in purposely incorrect news articles just so we can talk about stuff. Mm. And you you won't know. It could we, you won't know which one was wrong. It could be anything. Yeah. And it's like like um, uh, Schrodinger's cat or yeah. something like that, where it, it's both correct and incorrect. Until you check! You know why Schrodinger did that experiment? Why? To demonstrate how stupid the physics community is. He's like, of course, if I- Okay guys, here's an experiment. If I put my cat in this box with a random bottle of vial that'll break, then we, we can perceive it as both broken and I'm broken, and the cat alive and dead. Well, obviously the cat's dead. That was the point. You don't have to measure everything to make- It's a great- I, I, don't, I don't agree that he did it just- No, that was his was point. You can, you, can, you can Google that. That was his point. Anyway, so. What's our first bit of news? Me? Well, I'll tell us. My first bit of news is... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at this little... You're just trying to fill time while your phone slowly opens. So if you didn't notice the sudden cut then, Nathan wasn't sitting more directly in the middle. And uh, because I am a perfectionist, we need to do it right. Shad is so autistic about being in the centre, and Nathan is so autistic about defying No, him. I'm autistic about him being in the centre. Oh, I okay. want you to be the centre of attention. <sighs> so... So, you know what's really funny? What? We've got like heaps of more... Oh, I'm going to point this out, and once I point this out, you're never going to be able to unsee it, and everyone is going to be go. really annoyed by it. What is it? it? Well, we've, we've got more lights around us, because mm. with the green screen, you need to expose it. And so... <laughs> You just see white circles in Nathan's glasses. Because he is. Do ascended. you see it in mine? Like I don't think I'm reflecting. No. I, what? Because you're in the angle, I think. Because I'm in the middle, and I'm yeah. getting every single. Like I look at the, to the camera. You can see it all. Yeah, it's like you see these weird, bright circles in your glasses. Now it's gonna bother everyone. I've got my contacts to work now, guys. It's, you have contacts. I have to, yeah. Can you do it? Like, can you like tilt them up? See if that. I do a shad. Hey, there we go. Oh, kind shad. of. <laughs> it sounds like, it. See, see this? It's much, much more comfortable. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> but doing a shad sounds like something you'd do after having too much Mexican food. <laughs> like, I, I mean, your name's a great, Shad. You're besmirching my like, name, Ollie. No, 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 no. The S is the S tier, Chad, right? But at the same time, the name is a is a not it's not a numerous name that you see in society. It, it's an original name. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you're so unique, and the YouTube channel has been so successful. Who the hell's a shad guy? Let's find out more. Anyway, Damn. so news. First bit of news. You guys might not have heard this. Um, so a tragic accident. Uh, mm. Well, before we get into that, uh, apparently murder is now illegal in the state of New Mexico. Only on film sets. Ooh, that's a bit rough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so Alec... I've got tons more jokes like that. <laughs> so Alec Baldwin killed a woman... On set. Yeah, so this has been everywhere in the news. I think everyone has... Have they everyone heard it? Like, he, bought, it? <laughs> he bought a gun to a prop gun fight. So, well, <laughs> hang on. It annoys me everyone's calling it a prop gun. It's like, it's a real gun! It's a real it's, gun. It was a real gun! If it could shoot a real bullet and kill someone... That's a real gun! I don't care if it's being used as a prop. It's a real bloody gun! <laughs> like, um, so there's a lot of debate online as to uh, how... Uh, um, uh, much responsibility falls on uh, all Alec. Of it. Almost um, all of it. You reckon? Yep. Well, really? Well, let's di let's discuss it. Well, it's, half. Uh, well, there's also there's a lot of unknowns about this. Okay. Mm. Um, and more information we brought out. But what had to have happened is Alec must have pointed the gun at the um. Uh, is, is it? Is Cin it she was a cinematographer. Cinematographer. Which means and, she was holding. And pulled the trigger. So, no matter how much of you try and say he would, didn't know and everything like that, he did that with a real gun. 
And a lot of people were to all talking about, you know, just basic brain dead gun safety things is that yep. you always treat a gun if it's loaded. You never, even if it's, you, you know it's fake, oh, no, sorry, even if you know it's unloaded and everything, you never point and pull the trigger if it's a real gun. You never do that. Yep. And regardless of what people try and say about it wasn't really his fault, he was told that at blinks and everything like that, he must have pointed at them and pulled the trigger. And that point right there uh, does reveal an, a shocking and extreme level of uh, carelessness, mm. um, uh, incompetence, disregard. Uh, yeah. Like there is, there is culpability for that just act right there, which must have happened. <laughs> and he's been anti-gun his whole career. Ooh. He's one of those ivory tower elites who's like, guns are bad. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, can I get? Can I tell you some conspiracies about this? Well, yes. Uh, well, again, these are conspiracies. This part, okay. They are. They are backed up by well, fact. Well, though. this someone had to have put the bullet. Uh, and uh, like, I want to know again. We there's so much un you know unknown. Was it a full clip of live, or was it blank blank live blank blank blank? Like, so was it was it one you know live round that they slipped in with the blanks? It's like Dave Chappelle birdshot buckshot birdshot birdshot buckshot. <laughs> <laughs> is it like that? It's like, blank! Okay, blank! <laughs> Whatever. Um, no, so, okay, get this right. So, the husband of the woman who was killed was a lawyer for guess which famous politician? What? what? Mrs. C-Word. Oh, well, okay. And now you could see word in two senses. So this is this is already getting very conspiratorial. So like, get, is this is an, is this a side to Pizzagate or something already? This this is a this is a post from a uh, Norwegian basket weaving forum. Uh, what are the chances of Alec Baldwin, who starred in The Hunt for Red October, which is about a nuclear submarine in M Murmansk, shooting and killing a woman? on the film set that never has live ammunition. Film sets don't have live ammunition, never, right? But this one did, real bullets on a movie set. And what are the chances she pointed, uh, that he pointed the gun at her and her alone, nobody else, and she grew up in Murmansk, which is <laughs> a new, which is a nuclear submarine base. <laughs> this is like nuclear submarine movie. No, Things because she, Alec she, <laughs> she grew up she so the the nuclear submarine movie is in Murmansk, right? She grew up in that same town, which is the middle of nowhere. What significance does okay. that, that connection have? Okay, in? okay, no, I'm still going. I'm okay. Still going. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, that is famous in, in you know nuclear submarines and uh, espionage. And what are the chances she just happens to get married to a guy who works for a firm that defends the Clintons? And what are the chances that she was she used to investigate to be an investigative journalist, and her father used to be a naval commander at the nuclear submarine based in Murmansk, and she and she alone got killed by the actor who starred in the movie about espionage between the Soviets, between the Soviet Union and the U.S. And guess what month it happened in? October. And was the movie Red October? Yeah, the Hunt for Red October. It's all coming together, Oz. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it means either. What? How could I don't know why these events are related, but they are, people. <laughs> Clearly, there's a conspiracy. Well, no, I think the conspiracy that you obviously can have more validity is that someone put the bullet in there. Mm. Um, that might be the case, but apparently... But you were saying live ammunition is banned on set. Yeah. Okay. We, are you then saying that they knowingly had some live ammunition on set at the same time? Yes, like... uh, because apparently what happened was a bunch of the people who worked on the place were like fired and so they brought in some new people and the new people uh to pass time like to go out into the desert and shoot so they bought live ammunition but you meant to on film sets you either have blank ammunition or dummy ammunition you never have real ammunition one or two so dummy ammunition doesn't fire yeah. it just looks like so that don't. there's already like just if what you're saying is correct there it's profound incompetence on the set oh, for yeah. allowing any live ammunition close to the set right so that's huge but then they also had like a big protest walkout uh, uh, for a, a lot, a decent amount of the staff, and so this is a horrendously mismanaged film set. Mm. On top of all that, um, and so there are piles and piles of bad around the story. Mm. Now, it's tragic. Don't get us wrong. Like this is a, a tragic accident. A poor lady, you know. Man, how would that, that? Imagine that. Going to work and then, 
Ooh. Imagine if we were filming one day and you accidentally like stabbed me. Yeah. If you didn't it's... get that on film, I'd be very upset. <laughs> but <laughs> boy, I was gonna say something so mean. <laughs> That's not a true comparison, Oz. Cause... Being stabbed would be worse than getting shot. Yeah, but no one cares if you die. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that. I love Oz, it'll be tragic. And okay? people will be a lot more forgiving of you than they would have Alec Baldwin. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people have been asking that. They've been asking, can Alec Baldwin come back from this? And I'm just sitting there thinking, I'd be worried about the woman coming back from this. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, Oz. Oh, Too soon? Too soon. <laughs> I didn't know her. <laughs> that's, that's oh, it's so hard not to laugh during the serious segment. Guys, all life is important. Life is a tragedy and you have to look for the, yeah. you know. Every day is a tragedy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Alec seemed genuinely, you know, remorseful. You see, you saw photos of him doubled over and all that stuff. You're always more sceptical, are you? Because he's an actor. Okay. If he had accidentally shot someone, right, and that was mm -hmm. it. I'd be like, yeah, okay, forgiving. But because he said, why don't I just shoot the two of you, bang, well, bang. Well, we don't know if that's true. Oh, okay. We don't know if that's true. But you know, there was one of his tweets that came out a while back mm -hmm. where a cop accidentally killed a person and then Alec Baldwin tweeted, I can't imagine what it would be like to accidentally kill someone. How would you live with yourself? Well, Alec, now you know. There's a movie oh. There's a movie called In Bruges where a guy accidentally kills a kid because he's an assassin, he accidentally kills a kid, and so his boss tries to kill him. But in killing him, he accidentally kills a kid. He's like, oh, so that's what that feels like. He's <laughs> like, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Alec, <laughs> you popped your cherry in there. Uh. <laughs> it's not murder. Well, it, it's man's, uh, well, it's man's man's slaughter. Woman yeah. slaughter. Woman slaughter. Man slaughter. <laughs> like, um, we say people slaughter. <laughs> Man used to mean like like not just Human male. Meant, meant I've all of mankind. Mam slaughter. It is mam slaughter. It's mad. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I had plausible deniability with mam slaughter, but then you just blow it out of the water. <laughs> I think everyone knows that. You one. You just though. blew that one away, like Alec. <laughs> And do you know something crazy about the movie? <laughs> the movie that he was filming is about a guy <laughs> uh, who accidentally kills someone. Yeah. Oh. That's another layer to this conspiracy. <laughs> this is... This... Oh. So, I think, like, Hollywood has this weird, uh, strange kind of contradictive nature where a lot of the Hollywood elites are massively anti-gun, yet mm. all the movies are <laughs> blowing people away and everything, well, all pro-gun. And that, I don't think that'll ever change because pe action movies do too well. Mm. Um, and so, uh, it's because it's just interesting, you know, if someone's truly anti-gun, like as, as the actor themselves, would they allow themselves to go in a movie that promotes gun usage? Um, it just... I don't know. Well, this is where my cynical side comes in. I think, uh, you know... Not focusing particularly on Alec, but all the whole anti-gun, you know, thing is Hollywood deletes some um, uh, more uh, virtue signaling than actually caring about the issue. Oh, they itself. don't care. They're just, you know, in ancient Rome. I think some do, but it seems like the large majority are just out there trying to get clout. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, in ancient Rome, actors mm -hmm. were lower than prostitutes. Mm. Let's return to <laughs> tradition. No. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I wanted to be an actor when I was young. No, you didn't say it right. I uh, wanted to be an actor. actor. Act? No, it's actor. A an actor. Actor. Fine, actor. Actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. Yeah. And I do act in the short film, mm. so you know, and I got to flex my acting muscles a bit. You know what is interesting? It was fun in this in this movie. They did do something pretty impressive. They got two shots out of the one camera. <laughs> I wonder what they did when they called the police, called 911. Get down to the movie set, there's been a shooting! And? I've got pages of these written down. Oh. Did you come up with these or did you just find them? No, I come up, I come up with a few of them. <laughs> the first one, murder is legal in the state of uh, New Mexico. That's a Norm MacDonald one. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there's a lot to discuss about it, uh, but, and uh, overall it's tragic, I, I, you know, 
I can't imagine what the family would be going through, especially children. I, oh, that's just... Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, in terms of the culpability of Alec, okay, mm. I, I don't, it's obviously not murder, okay? He does bear a certain level of responsibility because he did point it at someone and pull the trigger, which is insanely irresponsible mm. for a gun. Because even if someone tells you that this is blank, right, yeah. like it's uh, non-real ammunition, you really, like, because <laughs> the difference between a blank and a live bullet of what that can cause is so drastically serious yeah. that you probably never want to take someone's word on it. You would check it yourself. Just because someone tells you that the shot is safe doesn't mean it is. But even then, if you're shooting a blank, like... Pieces from it can still fly and hit people. Yeah, like that's what killed. Uh, that's what killed. What's his name? Um, yeah, like, Brandon Lee. Mm -hmm. Blanks you know, that, just. Brandon so, Lee. do you think the fact that he did point it at someone and pull the trigger, like, puts it into the realm of criminally incompetent? Like, should he receive charges? In your opinions, like, but, you know, if that yeah. was my wife, or oh, I would be seeing red. that guy in court. Yeah, uh, like, um. But being a, a dis, detached from the personal stuff and everything, I can see how utterly, you know, um, regretful the situation, but also, like, he, he was incompetent, but he didn't mean any of them, mm. you know. Tell you what, I'll settle for this as a punitive measure. He's not allowed to do one of those wanky, you know, anti-gun PSAs ever again. This would make him more anti-gun. Massively so. <laughs> I told you, folks. <laughs> People are dangerous with these. You should have never given me... Like, you should have banned me from being... <laughs> Give me a gun right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> there's, a, there's a joke in community where it's like... Um, in 100% of fake gun-related shootings, it is the person with the fake gun that got shot. <laughs> <laughs> that? I don't remember that one. Is yeah. that, that? I think that's the um, conspiracy <laughs> episode, really... which is brilliant. Brilliant writing. Oh, like especially when you got to watch it for the first time, yeah. the, the ending play out. I was just golden, and the reaction of the deed is just so like. Jim Rash. I, I started watching Community not liking the deed and ended up loving him. He's, yeah, he's funny. <laughs> like, and just the sometimes the offhand things like, and now we're harming innocent perverts. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one is when Jeff puts on a pair of glasses. Ah, welcome back, Jeffrey. How was your? Oh, 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 oh. oh my God! Even his shadow. Look at his shadow. Oh. <laughs> and then the dean has an orgasm on the ground, and he's like, even his shadow. Even his shadow. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jim Rash is a treasure. <laughs> He's an Oscar winner, that guy. Is he? I'm pretty sure. I Community think is a treasure. Yeah. Uh, one of the greatest shows ever made. Mm. That episode got me into conspiracy theories. Yeah. I never looked oh, back. Oh, that was yeah. the gateway drug. Mm. Mm. Alright, so moving on then. The next news item. Let's item. see what we got. Um, oh, I've got a really important news item. Mm -hmm. I have started to re-watch Stargate SG-1. Atlantis is better. Now, this is, we've decided that we need to share some really important uh, news items that's happening lo locally in our local area. As well as globally. Yep, and so we're, we're going to be combining a bit. And uh, so, headline thing, I have started re-watching Stargate SG-1 mm. and it has reminded me um, how much of a great show it is. Mm. Like, the writing is witty, clever, it doesn't speak down to the audience. In actual fact, it takes account of the audience and expects them to be smart and tries to explain things mm. um, that people who aren't as switched, yeah, dumb people wouldn't get. But because the show expects the audience to be smart, it treats them with respect. And it's like, TV has changed so much. Yep. I've been watching just garbage, right? Garbage. And, and then I go back to our old classic shows like, well, this is good, uh, and it was just one episode. It's like I needed something throwaway, right, mm. to put on while eating dinner, mm. something that was appropriate for the kids. Not the first episode, but um, any other episode is basically fine. Mm. As a random episode from season three of Stargate, and I was like laughing, enjoying it so much. Like I, I, I started again, but to not it's a seven seasons big show. I, I just went through the the key important episodes in season one and season two. And oh, I'm enjoying it. I liked Atlantis a lot. 
Uh, I, I enjoyed SG One the most. Like the characters, mm. es especially um, uh, Daniel. Daniel's my favourite. Yeah, you know, see, uh, um, my brain just went dead. Jack. 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 Yeah. Yeah, like, I love him. Um, I liked the Doctor from Atlantis. He was my favourite. Hang on, hang on. The Doctor. It's not the. Um, uh, He's the nervous one. The nervous, funny one. The the arrogant, smart one. I think so. Because he appears in SG One and and um, becomes goes into because he's my favorite character. Too. If we're talking about the right the same one, mm. yeah, yeah, he be, he became my favorite in Atlantis. Yeah, it's a good show. It's when I first saw James Marmola. Jason, Jason, M Jason Marmola. Marmola. Yeah, same, same yeah. Here. He was that alien, wasn't he? Right, Ronan. Well, well, it's funny. Like, um, his acting wasn't as you know refined, and even now, but back then. He had trouble emoting, but he could always play the tough guy. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Stoic. And, and so, yeah, it was, uh, it was funny. Um, Your voice trembled then, just thinking about Jason <laughs> <Mavara> <laughs> with no, his no. twin guns and his exposed arms. <laughs> no, that didn't make me hesitate. It was thinking about some types of the bad acting. That, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the bad acting. Oh, sorry, man. I'm kidding. <laughs> Making fun of me, Oz. Uh, oh, wouldn't it be bad if someone made fun of someone? It's not like I said... <laughs> No one loves you in this episode already. Yeah, hey, <laughs> all the love I need is in the comments down below. Oz is an expert at loving himself. Down below. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had to share that important news item. Uh, uh, well, here's an important news item for me. You know what? We're going to do a global one and then come back to personal. Gonna, you got to mix it up. Fine, let's do everything you want to do. Mm. Okay. Superman removes the American way from his tagline. But that wasn't the only thing that happened. They actually we changed already the tagline. We re yeah, I know. Yeah, sorry. I thought you were going to say he's also... But it wasn't... He, he isn't gay. It's his son. And yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. But they, they changed it from... Um, uh, for your truth, social justice... And they cut the American way. No, what's the actual... <laughs> there's like truth, justice, and what's the last one now? The American way. No, no, um, they, they replaced it with, and for the good of all mankind, or something like that. And what? for America again. Uh, we need to look it up. We need, I don't we need know to... what it is. Look at it. You told me that I didn't have time so, to research what? it. You've got to find oh, it right there. Just I did not have Superman time to finish tagline. the Jeremy video. Okay. But I'll talk about, um, that, look, actually, this bothers me quite a lot. Uh, it goes to the whole elitist, you know, attitude that America is a terrible place. But in actual fact, America has been leading, a uh, shining example for true freedom, and its constitution is amazing, all that, all that good stuff. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, everyone thinks that America's a bad place, but no, that only happened after Biden was elected. <laughs> after Trump was elected, people would say. No, everything was great after Trump. People having the best, like, small business was booming. COVID. No. After COVID, everything What's was that? like, shut up. What, the C word? You can say COVID, can't you? The you get to say the C word on on video, but I can't. Okay, Hillary Clinton is a. <laughs> okay, my bad. Okay. Oh, okay. See, See this I've is ever why seen. we have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. A better tomorrow. That's the gayest thing. Well, I've Well, actually, ever read. this is. I, I even find that a bit subversive because by stating that, it's basically acknowledging or or a, it's a statement, a subtle. Subliminal statement that the world sucks, America is bad and needs to be improved and mm. stuff. Where Truth Just the American Way stated that the ideals that America was founded on are really important. They are. And they are. Arguably but, the best. But this is why I like this is bothering me. So by taking that away, they are destroying some of the core aspects of, you know, the Superman character where Superman is all about and they might try and say it is hopeful because it's trying to make a better, you know, world. But it's also saying that the current world is terrible. You know, I don't often take a moral stance on things. Mm -hmm. That's more like you and Nathan's thing against me. But I will on this. I don't think it's even their right to do that. Superman is such a culturally ingrained thing for America. They shouldn't have a right to do that. I'd say Superman belongs to America, not bloody DC Comics Well, this, anymore. Is, this is an interesting discussion on the concept of... Uh, um, when something leaves copyright, it becomes like public, uh, public domain. Public domain, um, because it used to be where a lot of things entered. Where, and I kind of, I can see what you're saying there, especially when something becomes culturally significant, mm. part of our history as a people and stuff. That I think everyone has a certain claim 
on it, especially when it's been around for so long. Because, mm. and my comparison is stories like Robin Hood, right? Mm. Um, it's a historical story that has uh, been used and referenced, and uh, I, and mm. so of course, public domain. But then there are stories that, you know, are more recent. And because copyright has been extended, 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 like, like Disney, like Superman, like Star Wars, and yep. all these things, that um, and it is Disney who's been the leading one yeah, to lobbyists. extend copyright. Um, that, yeah, it seems to deny the kind of concept of uh, a shared attachment to a shared culture. Uh, well, yeah, shared culture to something that has had such a significant impact. Mm. Um, uh, my thoughts are not complete on the subject because, uh, you know, d is it different when something isn't as culturally important, like, you know, loved? Uh, um, uh, and, I, and there's a lot of arguments that I need to play in my head to decide where I actually land on it. I think um, ownership is deeper than who, whoever's name is written on the piece of paper. Yeah, it's true, like... Ownership is attached, is, a, is attachment to... Oh, man. No, it's... but see, all right. I think um, parents have the right to pass on ownership of things that they yeah. possess to their children. Yeah, but that's but their what if blood. It's an, but what know? if it's an intellectual property? No? If it's an intellect, no, no. But that's the thing is that like some things become cultural and like just part of something else, not part of a company. You know? I, well, yeah. When does that happen though? It's hard. To I say. don't know, but it definitely reaches a point of you perhaps. Know. Like I said, I have incomplete thoughts on it, but I do see what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, and I get offended when people try and destroy what the core aspects of a character that have been established and beloved and stuff. I figured it out and it's oh. exactly what you just said. It's when they lose ownership themselves, when they destroy it themselves. When the people who supposedly own mm -hmm. it destroy it, that's when it's no longer theirs. But that can be a bit subjective because like... What I mean? Well, for example, with Star Wars, I would think the last sequels destroyed the franchise. But yeah, and they people, did objectively. But, but some people liked it. Well, so then you're gonna... Like you need it, like you need a date or a time or some sort of like legal way of measuring it. I don't think we do. I think we just need a group of people with weapons. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I'm just joking. on the note of Star Wars, right? If Star Wars was public domain mm. and people were, it's so beloved. People already make fan films mm. of them, and some of them aren't bad at all. People make fan games that are yeah. great. Like if Star Wars was truly public domain, we would be getting vastly more content, all like worldwide, and some of it would be really good. And the entire franchise, mm -hmm. the idea of Star Wars, would be elevated as a result. Yep. Um, so now, think of everything. as to what is, would be classed true canon and what not, it's hard to Doesn't say. Doesn't matter. It's, it's well, actually, every movie. property, every, whatever you're making, would get to classify what is canon in its own story yeah. if it acknowledges, you know, because I would not be acknowledging the sequels. They're non-canon. Like, and even now, I don't care what Disney says. They're, they're, they're not canon. Bad fan fiction. For me, I got the same thing with Halo after Halo 3. <laughs> yeah. Because what do they do with all the rings? And like all the Tolkien universe? Because do they still own that? Yeah, it's not public domain. <laughs> it's after Christopher Tolkien I died. I don't think it is. Check. Like, I don't know how far, like, how far along they are until it goes public domain. Because I reckon for certain properties like with like the Tolkien years. universe, with Star Wars, mm. and like Marvel DC stuff, that you should be able to pass on like ownership and so you have the rights to like merchandise big budget films and stuff but then i think something should be out like for example robin hood people mm. can like universal studios can have a licensing agreement where they have the rights to the the movie for like 10 years what but robin any, hood yeah no uh, robin hood is public domain but that's what i'm saying for an example with but, any but other franchise what they do like so uh, the kevin costner robin hood one yeah. of my favorite Okay. Um, whoever it made it has the uh, copyright for that adaptation of Robin yeah. Hood. Um, and so it's interesting how that can... There is still like copyright with adaptations mm. of a public domain work. Um, but yeah, so uh, truth just the American way like is dead, unfortunately. No, it's um, not. Well, well, they're making it dead with Superman. They're trying to kill it. They're trying to. They can't. Yeah. You can't mm. kill an idea. Ideas are bulletproof. Like Superman. Like Superman. God. We'll see. Nice. We'll see. Nathan yeah, did a good we'll one there. He did. I was proud of that. Okay, so you had a personal item of news to share. Oh, yeah. Um, I watched a movie I've been meaning to watch for a while called Boss Level. I've seen that on... Is it, it's on Netflix. No. It caught my eye. I can't remember what it was on. No, it's on Netflix because I remember the guy in it is... Um, he, 
he's the shield agent who yeah. becomes a bad guy that gets quickly killed off Great in, actor. in um, Civil War. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he caught my eye, and then I realised it had Mel Gibson in it as well. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he directed it, didn't he? I did he? I have no idea. I don't know, but he's he's a great director. He's a conservative. Like, this is the thing. I love these conservative movies that are coming out now. All the conservative people are getting together and um, their own stuff. Yeah, so Mel, right? Like, if you listen to it, I've watched an interview he did mm. recently after... Well, it's not recent now, but after he made Hacksaw Ridge. First of all, Hacksaw Ridge is a phenomenal Incredible film. movie. It's one of my True favorite story. films I've ever watched, right? And so... And... Uh, even though Braveheart, I have a lot of issues with the <laughs> historical accuracy, it's still a phenomenal film. And so you can't say he's not a, like, a good director. He's a phenomenal director. Mm. He is a really good actor, really entertaining and stuff. And uh, he was drunk. He made some mistakes. I think he, he apologised. People should forgive him. And when you actually listen to how he talks, he's actually a genuinely really good guy. Mm. Like, one thing that really impressed me when he was doing this interview, he was remembering people he'd worked with on the set by name wow. and you know I, I just you know if it was someone doing the camera work or cinema work, and he was always remembering these people by name like he was treating them as individuals who he respected and treated really decently and that's like you know impressed me it's a good quality and stuff and so people try and destroy people's whole lives based on single mistakes yeah which I find disgusting and then they are vindictive like really, and they won't let it go. They won't forgive, right? And because it came up, Mel Gibson is going to be in um, uh, the new John Wick. There's a new John Wick coming out that Mel Gibson Mel be playing a role in. He's getting a renaissance. And no, there was a big backlash because like, how dare you put this evil, you know, person in it? Because he's been tarred and feathered and tarnished as this untouchable, you know, person because of mistakes he's made, even though. He, he, he came out, he apologised, he tried to make it all mm. good and everything. Um, and people, they just won't let it go. He did, he did, so when he got drunk and said those things, <laughs> uh, he actually made up for it in this, with this movie. I think they did. I think they addressed it in this movie. No, because I swear, I swear to you, there's a scene where a guy, the main guy, stops a woman and, and takes her gun. He's like, this gun has AH on it, what's that mean? Oh, that's Adolf Hitler's gun. And then he shoots her with it, and she's and he's like, "That's for the Jews." <laughs> I kid you not. What did Mel say that? No, it wasn't Mel Gibson, oh, okay. but he's in the movie, so I think it was related. <laughs> but no, it was a great movie because it was about responsibility and fatherhood and self-sacrifice, and like fifty million people got killed in this movie. It was so cool. I'm awesome have to watch fights. it. And so I saw the that it's this is in the trailer. It's mm. like a Groundhog Day relive. Uh, yeah. So yeah. he every morning he wakes up with someone swinging a machete at him. Mm -hmm. That's his, the start of his day. Next, it's an attack helicopter blowing his apartment away. It's it's a great movie, and the I way he to, might have to check it out. You do have to check it out. The actor mm -hmm. Frank Grillo, I think that's his name. Mm -hmm. Former stuntman, great actor. Probably does his own stunts too. I don't know. I didn't check that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. All right. So uh, next to news item. Next news item. Everyone knows my code to my phone now. No, I don't. I was. It was. Okay. Over. Batwoman set conditions were borderline Auschwitzian. Well, that's an exaggeration, but they were pretty darn bad. Well, it was a work area and it was really bad conditions, yeah. so... That's, a, that's not a direct equivalent of it. <laughs> it was pretty bad, though. It was pretty bad. Ruby Rose came out, and if you haven't heard of it... Like... For a second time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick off the mark there, Ross. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll be here all night. <laughs> uh, she, uh, yeah, exposed some uh, terrible conditions, um, injuries that yep. had happened, and then, uh, well, I, I can't remember the details. I've there was one person who got paralysed, one person who got, there was a, a report that one person got like half their skin burnt off, but mm -hmm. it turns out that was just a guy dressed as Two-Face. Um, <laughs> just kidding. But he is dressed as Two-Face now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know these people, okay? And if you can't laugh about things, like when I get hurt, I laugh. Yes, that's but, true. I'm, I know I do. Yeah. Well, you laugh when I get hurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, there you go. So, why should it be different? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to remember one of the details, like... Uh, she got injured, they wanted they, her back. They fought, yeah, and uh, she couldn't make it to a Comic Con at one time, and they forced her to, mm. you know, even though it was them that had was cancelling, and then they forced her to um, 
either they weren't going to announce it, just everyone rock up and be disappointed, or she she would have to take the bullet and announce it and all that stuff, and then oh, they tried to they even tried to. Didn't they try to make her out that she was selfish when she originally quit the first season and stuff? They like, tried to call her all these different things. They yeah. did. So the CW just, just, like, looking really bad with all these revelations and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that she uh, is sticking it to them. Good on her for doing it. Yep, but mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I don't like Ruby Rose. Well... <sighs> She's a feminist. It's not that she... Like, the whole marketing around... Batwoman was horrible. I like, just awful about you know. Um, uh, <laughs> it, the bat suit will be perfect, perfect. when it fits a woman. It was it was actually misandrist in its, yeah. in its uh, tone and delivery and stuff. And she was fully on board with all of that. And so um, uh, that's right. I, I, I don't give her a pass for that kind of stuff either. Um, but no, if she was legitimately going through horrible working conditions, regardless of you, I, you I don't think that's where her it. attitude came from though. Uh, no, who, even good attitude, bad attitude, if you're subjected to crap that she had to, you know, go through. And the worst injury of all was to her career being in that crappy TV show. <laughs> that was so bad. <clears throat> the best fun, though, was watching, um, uh, what, Mola in his series, just watching through those movies. Yeah, so shows. good old EFAP crew are watching the entire Batwoman, um, uh, series and just, and I've... Uh, I, like, I haven't watched it, but I, I did a reaction to one of the weapons in the double flail. Thing. And that got uh, so many views somehow. Yeah, that, uh, well, it was a horrible weapon and people want to, you know, wanted mm. to see me roast it. Um, so there we go. CW kind of sucks. And, uh, you know, they're so... They, they label themselves as so, uh, yeah, progressive and inclusive mm. and treating people good and all that stuff. When it's all a complete smokescreen virtue oh, signaling yeah. bullcrap. When they're... Uh, <sighs> I'm not saying everyone who is, you know, more progressive is an awful person, but why does it seem like there's a disproportionate representality of the people that are really outspoken and stuff end up being... Yeah, some make sense, because when you're willing to hate someone just because they have a different opinion to you, mm -hmm. that already is a sign that they're an awful person. And so when it comes out that they actually do treat people really abusively, and like, oh, gee, that's not much of a surprise. Well, it's because they are vain not Rude. all. Not all. We don't want to lay well, everyone I mean, in. They're compensating for something. Like I, I admit that I'm not like a great person because I have very awful things that I say. Hang on, hang on. What do you mean? I think you're a very good person. Well, I don't pretend to be like a great person. You know what I mean? I don't virtue signal. No, you don't. You're, well, very, there you go. you're very upfront about who you are. There you go. Mm. But whereas this guy watches the ABC. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm kidding. You man. need to think of a new one. Speaking of which, that's the first three things you said this entire video. No, I no. said Superman is like bulletproof. And he talked about the public domain stuff? Yeah. Oh, I just wasn't listening. Okay, my bad. I'm kidding, man. <laughs> you know you are a bad person. No, he just, just, just phases it out. I don't just phase it out. I, I recognize the Superman one. I've just got bad memory. That is very so, true. So, <laughs> on to our next bit of news. Alec Baldwin shot a lady. Do you have anything to share from. Like a very important news item to share about. Like, I've been thinking maybe? about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a new printer. Really? I got a new printer. What actually. type of printer is this? It's actually a really good printer, Shad. Yeah. And when your old one breaks, I think you should get this one. Is it as big as my printer? Because uh, my no, printer's pretty big. It's small. It's oh. a small one, but it's very effective. It does I thought you'd job. have a small printer. So yeah, it's not about yeah. the size. It's about what it does. It's about how much. That, that's probably true. Yeah. It's about how much ink it can get out. <laughs> Legit though. <laughs> I'm not joking. So it's an Epson printer, and instead of having like ink cartridges, they've got these little bottles of ink, and you place it in, and the ink lasts up to a year. Oh wow! Up to a year? Yeah. I'm suddenly feeling very ina like, uh, inadequate, inadequate about my printer. Yeah. Because the friggin' ink runs out all the bloody time on it. Just squirts it out and runs out so quickly. Yeah, not mine. Just can keep going. <laughs> Doesn't stop. <laughs> It's endurance is very high. Wow. I wish my printer had such endurance. Semen. What? <laughs> That's what they were thinking. No, we weren't. We're talking about printers, you sicko. Well, that is, uh, that is very important news. Thank you for sharing that, Nathan. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what about... What else? Uh, oh, yeah, we lit a fire using faith. Well, hey, hey, we will get to that. That's an important one. Is there any uh, global news topics that we need oh, to address? Um... Oh, the Uncharted movie. Trailer. Yes. So I have only seen like the highlights, mm. but 
Wow, Tom Holland does not look like Drake. No. At all. He doesn't look... I thought Drake was a black artist who did, like, really <laughs> bad... But they've completely... Very race, funny, Oz. They've race swapped him. I thought it only went one way, but no, they've done it this way, so I'm okay. Like, that balances things out, <laughs> I, mean, I guess. We're not talking about that Drake, Oz. Nathan Drake. Na oh, yeah. why don't you say Nathan? Do you Drake? like him, but just because his name is Nathan? Okay, um, growing up, I remember seeing um, they did a review on Good Game, and they're like, his name's Nathan, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. But they only like call him Drake most of the time, anyways. So. Why? Because Drake sounds, it sounds cool. Better. No, Nathan's cooler. Nathan. I, I mean, I agree, but nah, Drake <laughs> sounds cooler. Um, so yeah, Nathan Drake. He looks like a guy, thirties. Built solid uh, frame. Like, um, who's the guy in Mad Men? Who's the actor who plays? Uh, in that's John Hamm. He's like, he, that's the same type of frame that a guy that just looks mature and built uh, mm. and something. Where um, Tom Holland, he looks like he's perpetually 16. This is, this is not Nathan Dre. Like, I'm not hung up on the franchise. I haven't played a single Uncharted game, right? Yet, I'm still like, peed off for uh, the fans, because I like a, a pr good adaptations, and we'll get to Cowboy Bebop next, because... <laughs> <laughs> um, I like good adaptations that, you know, it feels like you're watching the same character. Mm. I would not be able to watch this one and see Nathan Drake and Tom Holland. It was very jarring. Like, everything else looks great. And they've yeah. got pieces Mark, look good. Mark like, Wahlberg? Yeah. What's he doing there? <laughs> this isn't a Transformers movie. Like, do you think he could have played Nathan Drake? All there? I reckon, yeah, he could have played better than Tom Holland. But... You know, he's like 40-something, isn't he now? No, he's like 50. Is he 50? Like... <gasps> he's aging well. i got to give it to him. Why but... is he on this movie, though? Was he playing Sully? Because I think this is an origin No, story. he's not playing Sully. There's no uh... way he's playing Sully. Um, but I don't like... St like, I reckon Tom Holland could play like a young orphaned Nathan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> like a 16-year-old version. But... I don't know what they're going to do in, if they make sequels for this game, or for this movie, because he's just not going to age very well. It wasn't, wasn't there a scene in one of the Uncharted games where he falls out of the plane and they've got that in the movie? Yeah, yeah. Like, they've got really good set pieces and, like... Yeah, that stuff like, looks great. Everything looks great, except for Tom Holland. I'm sorry. Why Spider-Man? Yeah, it's such a miscast. And, like, yeah, you know, star appeal and stuff, but that... No. No. You know who would make a good It one? actually... It, like... Look, I've got nothing against Tom Holland, okay? Um, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the adaptation of Spider-Man. I liked the first one, didn't like mm. the, you know, Far From Home. Um, but him as an actor and him portraying Peter Parker, I, I really like it. Mm. I don't like that Peter Parker's Peter is such an idiot. Because, um, mm. uh, anyway, g getting off topic. But, so nothing against you, Tom Holland. But... Seeing him in the role of Nathan Drake mm. actively turns me off the film. It makes me like less interested to even watch it, just because it looks so wrong. I'm the same. You know, who, oh, go on, man. They there's set pieces from the Last of Us HBO series. Like you can't see their faces, but the like dress up and stuff for the Last of Us cast mm. looks like perfect. And so, I wish they did that more with this Uncharted one, because Tom Holland just doesn't look. He doesn't. He can't even grow any. <laughs> In the five o'clock show. <laughs> like, I can't talk either, well, but yeah, I wouldn't want to go be... through puberty for that. Yeah, like, I don't want to be cast as Nathan Drake either, because I wouldn't fit. Well, yeah, you've got to go through puberty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know who would have made a good Nathan Drake? And I, this is going to be very circle jerky, but it's better than Tom Holland. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Yeah, he would have been, he would have been he, a lot better. Because he's got the build and frame, and he actually and looks funny. like yeah. he's 30. There you go. <laughs> the one movie you could have got Chris Pratt for, you got... But I don't Chris think Twat the, instead. I don't think it would be the best pick. You need someone no. who isn't as round. I'm not saying he's fat, but he has a roundish face and, and stuff. Like. Nathan Fillion, like 10 years ago, or maybe even 20 years Who's ago. Who's he again? I know his name. Nathan Fillion is in Firefly. He would have been perfect. Yes. And by the way, I'm annoyed I forgot his name. I love Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion's yeah, great. Firefly. He would have been the perfect. Yeah, Literally right. perfect. You are right. Although... He's too old now. Yeah, he needs to slim down a bit, you know? Yeah. Nathan Fillion from the Firefly when he was in that prime, you know? Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, he go back, though. would have been perfect. All right, so uh, next item, uh, important bit of news. Uh, we lit a fire yesterday. Using the power of faith. And a flint and steel. And a flint and steel. Well, that too. Mm. But yeah. the faith was the real power, though. It was. It was. Like a Dark Souls miracle. Mm -hmm. See, I was just wanted to give up. 
I wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the thing, right? I've realized the difference between me and Shad <laughs> yesterday. The difference is this guy doesn't give up. When he's, when, when I'm like, nah, Shad, come on, like, it's time to admit to be. He's like, no, no, we're gonna get it, lit! <laughs> he just closed his eyes and, and thought of nunchucks and that gave him all the hatred he needed to... Like, I mean. our hands were shaking in pain from trying to strike this thing. Yeah. And that was like, when we reached halfway, we were already in pain. Yep. But then we, we all said a prayer, mm -hmm. all of us, multiple yep. times. And then, My kid said a prayer. Yeah. As well. Then we yeah. switched back to the knife we'd already tried like three times, and then. It was a combination of uh, multiple things, and uh, part of it was thinking about the situation, looking for different ways to approach it. Mm. Uh, my daughter finding much better um, Tinder. She'd just mm. say, hey, Daddy, what about this? It's like, that's really good. Uh, she found dry moss. It's like, you know, because we weren't having much luck with the dry grass. Mm. And uh, and there, and then, uh, you know. And yeah, not giving up and, and stuff, and yeah, and uh, and then the technique of using, um, because uh, we had the flint and flint and steel, and striking down was like, oh, and you have to really grip it to get enough pressure on it to get it to flint. So many times that it was a little little flame and yeah. death. Um, but then a new technique where I combined the steel striker we had with the flint and my knife, and drawing it from the bottom on my knife like that to spark and then the knife was shielding any sparks jumping out to redirect them back down mm. uh, and oh boy did we get it to work yep. and we got a great fire out of it so next episode of Oz vs Wild well we'll light, we'll light a fire yeah if you haven't lit a fire before in a tri safe but it's a manly rite of passage yeah uh, every, every every man should know how to light a fire yeah don't light a fire anywhere that it might catch and burn the whole system down don't do that. Don't do that. I'm saying it sincerely. I'm saying Oz it. Is saying it ironically. I'm being very sincere right now. Don't do that. Oh, you're not blinking. <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> All right, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. So, oh, new man. trailer. I am a bit of a Cowboy Bebop fan. I fan. I watched this when I was an anime. Uh, we just came over to Australia. I think I saw the original DVD I bought when I was like I don't know, 15. Okay. <laughs> So, big Cowboy Bebop fan, um, I didn't have too much of a reaction to the, um, the characters, how they looked. Uh, Faye wasn't done accurately, that bothers me. I'm the type of person that gets annoyed when, like, a house isn't the same colour as it's depicted in a book or anime or whatever. Like, I've always been a sick I want it to look the same, and, like, and it's not hard! How could you get a paint of the building wrong? Like... She's, she's now, the imagine that, but instead of the colour of the building, it's the colour of the character. <laughs> that can get pretty annoying too. <sighs> well, yeah, I, but the thing is, right, he really looks like Jet. Oh yeah, the guy yeah. who plays, uh, uh... No, 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 that's Spike. Jet is uh, his partner, the black oh, guy. Oh, I thought you meant who, that He's guy. white in the anime, but he actually, to me, the robot arm looks pretty lousy, right? But they got the, like, I recognise him as Jet quicker mm. than I recognise Spike. Or so I actually am not too hung up on race changing. Yeah. Unless you can't see, like, I think, I always go to the best example, and it's a bad movie, but still, when the first Daredevil one, when they got oh, yeah. Michael Clark Duncan to play Kingpin, it, yeah. it worked great! Yeah. But, like, he suited the role in terms of the size um, that the Kingpin is supposed to have and depict in the comic books. Mm. Michael Clark Duncan was, like, one of the best you know, characters you could pick to fit that role to impo to convey b more aspects of the character, right? Mm. Um, and so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I take it on a case by case thing. This one, didn't I didn't bother. mind it for him. Yeah. I was but just Faye about stuff. doesn't look like Faye at all. Like the hair a little bit, and she's wearing yellow, and it's like I don't, I can't see her as Faye, and even less so now having seen the trailer. Um, the guy playing Spike, I can see him as Spike. I like the actor. Yeah, he doesn't like I. What has he been in? He's been Harold and Kumar movies. Is that him? That's him, yeah. Holy... No! He's also Sulu in the new Star Treks. Is that him? That's him. It is! Holy crap! I like the actor, he's a good actor. I like him too! I didn't yeah. realise it was him! It's him. But that's a credit then to it, because if, like, is he tr playing someone else's role... Yeah. I, I, like, where you can't recognise him from the other works he's been in. Mm. 
I saw I saw two episodes. Maybe of it's because he's a bit older now, because you he's, can see the age on him. He's getting up there. Yeah, I did not recognise him. My mm. goodness, he is showing his age a bit more, and so yeah, that, that might have been that might have thrown me. Uh, so the trailer though, mm. hmm, gee, uh, Cowboy Bebop, right, is a anime that takes itself seriously. Mm. This trailer felt like no one was taking. They're all a bit too jokey, a bit too lighthearted, and everything. Like, that's. Now, the, if he. You know, he shoots someone in the trailer, and it's like, that wasn't the mark. And it's like, he. he sh and then she's like, that wasn't the mark, or something like that, right? Yeah. And it's played off as goofily, where in the anime, they could. The, something like that could happen, because sometimes they accidentally make mistakes, but they would do it in a more serious way, yeah. and it would be funnier as a result. Well, it took its world seriously. Yeah, it did. But the characters were lighthearted and fun. Yeah. yeah. And so. The trailer felt way too goofy for the tone that Cowboy Bebop was, which mm. gave me bad vibes. Some of the um, things looked really good, like, like the Bebop ship itself looked pretty good. Mm. Um, well, something that I did not like, it was uh, um, the dynamic between Jet Spike, them two, and Faye Valentine. It's completely different compared to the other. Than what they showed in the this trailer. Yeah. It could be different in the show, and they, they could have just done it for the trailer. But this is the thing, in the anime, Spike doesn't like Faye, okay? He, like, in the end of it, he actually says there are three things he hates the most. Kids, dogs, and women with attitude. <laughs> and he ends up getting all three on his ship. A He's dog, my favourite character now. And a woman with attitude, right? Dog dog thing and, right? And their relationship with Faye in the anime, it was a necessary, unappreciated thing of, or it was an unappreciated thing of necessity, yeah, okay, partnership. where they needed to go into partner reluctantly, and so they didn't, and, and Faye rarely had a lot of say in what Spike, it, Spike and Jet were the main two, that was their team, mm. and Faye is kind of like a, a tag along, and she's also, she's very manipulative in the anime, she has some skills, but she's also very incompetent in other areas and stuff, and it made for a fun dynamic character, and the, uh, the, uh, relation dynamics between them was really fun and interesting. It's completely different in this trailer. In this trailer, it's showing Faye as an equal member of their team, who mm. gets to tell them what to do. And you can tell why they made these changes, because we can't have the female character have a back seat. Um, you can't have them be lacking in anything. They have to be good at every single thing. So let's let's make some predictions. You reckon she's going to be more competent? She'll be Mary Sue. Well, we'll see. Like, because uh, in the anime, sometimes she stuffs up, and uh, but she also has her strengths as well. Mm. Um, and she was she would she was very manipulative, right? I wonder if they have all those traits. And Netflix's track record, this is this is making me worried. And uh, man, it's weird. This is weird, right? I don't. I, I I can see the train wreck possibility. It could be great. I hope it's great, right? But I could see it become a train wreck. Yet I don't feel, even though I love Cowboy Bebop, I don't feel nearly as annoyed about it because the anime is still great, and I still got the anime. Um, this isn't like resurrecting a franchise and then just burning mm. it to the ground. To me, I don't know, for some reason, if you really want to see Great Bebop, just watch the anime. It's flipping awesome. Why didn't they continue it? Um, no, it had a distinct end. <laughs> it was a very... Well, let me guess, Spike dies. I'm not saying anything. Well, you, you blinked as you said that, so I assume that I'm correct. You could have heard what you want, Oz, but... Hey, you look like Nathan there. <laughs> <laughs> they could have actually made a sequel with some of the other characters. Um, uh, and it would work fine, okay. But there is a distinct arc in Cowboy Bebop, mm. and so, and that's this is one of the things that I appreciate about anime. Not always. Sometimes they have their shows like Naruto and Bleach, where they try and milk it to death—a show that never ends. But in most animes, they have a set arc, and then the story completes, and it's done. What? Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my head was still back in the printer thing. Okay. Um, yeah. No, man. I completely agree. <laughs> I'm just picturing a cow getting milked to death. <laughs> <laughs> You're not done yet, cow! Oh, but that's already been depicted in Kung Pao. Oh yeah, true. That was a great movie. That was a great movie. Kung Pao, Enter the he, Fist. He, he literally milks a cow to death. He punches a hole clean through a guy. <laughs> Have you seen that part? He punches a I've clean hole movie, straight through a guy. Great movie. Or the, the weird woman with one boob. <laughs> I have more blood on me, therefore I am the victim. She'd get milked to death a lot quicker. 
Um, oh man. Back to Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> so yeah, there was the other thing. There was a lot of cringe in the trailer. Oh yeah. Like like campy. They purposely made it campy. Now. Not good camp. Not good camp. I hope it's just for the trailer, <laughs> again, to make it a bit funny. And I don't mind it making him look like a 70s campy, low-budget thing. But Cowboy Bebop wasn't like that. It took itself seriously. Mm. It had its funny moments. But overall, it, it was a solid, solid show. And so, if they get the tone wrong in this, it's not going to feel like Bebop. Mm. Um, and I so, we'll have a review on good old Cowboy Bebop. Has, an, has a live-action depiction of an anime ever gotten it right? Yeah! Ever. When? Roni Kenshin. I haven't. I didn't know they did them. Ah, oh, dude. Was it good? So good. Okay. I haven't even watched them all, um, because I was waiting for dubs to come out, and the re and now it's basically finished. And they the final chapter is was funded by Netflix. Was it made by Netflix? Um, but it's probably the most accurate anime adaptation I've ever seen, and mm. it's flipping awesome, man. Roni Kenshin is like one of my favorite properties, not just animes, story properties ever. And you've seen that. You've seen the. First half of the OVA, remember? Trust yeah, me, Elijah. That's like, pretty good. It was awesome, man. Yeah. Like, oh. I like how, um, like, uh, they had omens, like Japanese omens in it for things, you know, like mm -hmm. the cut that wouldn't stop bleeding. Yeah. I, I like that sort of thing they do in movies and, and, and stories. It's great. Uh, it's, it's artistic. Mm. Samurai mm. X Trust and Betrayal is an artistic film that explores the impact of violence. Uh, there's this guy who's unstoppable, and it actually explores his psyche, what would happen to him unless... And it talks about the importance of, like, relationships. Mm. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful tale, it's a tragic tale, and it sets up one of the greatest characters ever. Like, seriously, Roni Kenshin is amazing, I love it. Um, and his whole arc is just this beautiful story of um, uh, redemption, and, like, just, ah, oh, so good. Nathan, you're a weeb. Say something anime. Arigato! Aishitaru! Aizagaimasu! Uh, anata wa Nihongo Jin desu? People who know Rurouni Kenshin will get this one. Amakaku no Ryo no Eremeki. You call me a weeaboo. Ryo Kuzen! I only remember the names, of the, these are the names of his attacks. His ultimate attack is called the Amakaku no Ryo no Eremeki. I had that in a place. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. And then the Ryokuzen is an attack where he strikes so fast that it's equivalent to being attacked from nine different angles at the same time. And so, you know, like a slash coming all at once and it can slice up anyone. And the only way to defeat it, because it's basically an attack coming from every angle, mm -hmm. is to strike the person before they can strike you. And that's the Amakako no Ryu no Hiremeki. It's like the most lightning fast, you know, sword strike from Sheath. Mm. It's, oh, it's a good show. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry I called you a weeb. Yeah, <laughs> we stand in the presence I've got of my weeb cred. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, so you know more Japanese than me. Really? Yeah. Just on the weeb thing, right? It's like classic old school weebery for me. Like mm. Cowboy Bebop and Roni Kenshin and Gundam Wing. And like, these were those shows were, and like I started with Evangelion. That shows me, tells me my age when it comes to anime. I'm not up to date on all the new stuff. They just start pumping it out in ridiculous quantity. Yeah. Especially all the stuff Netflix is making. And I haven't really watched any of the... I, I started watching Grappler Bucky because I watched that. That was a pretty good one, actually. Bucky's not pretty fun. So it is fun. Um, and stuff, but yeah, there's a lot of it because Demon Slayer is getting a really good review. I haven't watched Demon Slayer. Um, Demon Slayer. Oh yeah, I know the Demon Slayer one. Mm. Yeah, that one's. You know, it was a good one, but kind of had its weird moments. Was uh, Gate. Gate was pretty. I good. I want to watch Gate actually. But to be fair, it's very Japanese. Uh, it has its weird moments. But it's otherwise, anime. <laughs> yeah, it's anime. But otherwise, it was. I'm probably great. more familiar with the weirdness than you was. I hope so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, the Cowboy Bebop trailer is... There were some moments that looked really good, I mm. have to admit, but there was a lot of warnings, like, oh no. So, it's going to be an interesting watch. What did you think of, uh, what was it, Ghost in the Shell? Oh, the Scarlett Johansson one? Yeah. Didn't... I didn't like Scarlett Johansson, I liked every other part of the movie. Yeah. Not Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> it didn't do... Yeah, like, I, I, I don't remember... Feeling satisfied from yeah. that movie. Usually I feel very satisfied after reviewing a Scarlett Johansson, but not with this movie. <sighs> <laughs> so, I think that's all our news items. This is the episode of Nightly News where we, I don't know where, we, 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 uh, the, it's probably changed. Should we leave the talking. galaxy right now? Yeah, let's leave the space. galaxy. Mm. Okay. No, let's come back.
Back to the Greenland. Oh, thank you for watching Nightly News, and uh, until next time. I don't know how to sign off because the name of this channel is still in flux. Still up in the air, like we are right now. Oh, Ooh, clouds. Uh, yeah, that's a gay... That's not even funny. <laughs> that's homophobic, Oz. That's lame. That's retard phobic. Uh, oh. <laughs> and I was being sarcastic, but anyway. That's sincerity phobic. <laughs> Everything's phobic. <laughs> I'm just scared, okay? <laughs> what I hate is that people don't understand the meaning of the word phobic. It means fear, afraid. So you hate those people? Arachnophobia, right, means fear, not hate. <laughs> and so, mm. that's a misappropriation of the word, and it's like, does people don't get, understand Wasn't the Wasn't there a, words. there's a quote from, uh, what's his name? Who's the black actor? I forget his name. My name, Morgan Freeman, that's the one. He said, why do they call it homophobia? You're not afraid, you just hate gay people. <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> we don't hate gay people. But whenever I hear homophobia, it makes me think of a, like, if, if we were to use the proper definition of what it means, like, you're afraid a gay person is going to come out and jump you from behind. Yeah, like, oh, it's Michael Jackson, bro. Like, ah, oh, it's <laughs> Michael Jackson phobia. Oh, yes. That's a legitimate Ooh, fear. That's a... Anyway. We just got ourselves cancelled once again, so we'll end this video right now. <laughs>